One of the longest running core themes of the Sonic franchise is peace and happiness for all, regardless of past natures or tumultuous stops in the road. That everyone is deserving of a second chance. At love, trust, friendship, and simply life in general. Now, I know it may seem like I just love bringing up Knuckles at any possible opportunity, but that's only because I love bringing up Knuckles at any possible opportunity. Well, that and he's genuinely a fantastic example of second chances in the Sonic universe. When we're initially introduced to Knucklehead in almost all iterations of Sonic, whether it be Sonic Underground, the Genesis era, or the theatrical films, he is literally trying to kill Sonic. And now he's just one of the bros, hanging out and scrapbooking with Amy. What a guy. So, like I said, even though this theme has been established within the franchise for a long while, nowhere else was it as heavily explored as it was in Sonic's Dreamcast swan song, Sonic Adventure 2. Said game is widely considered to be one of the greatest Sonic games of all time, solely based on the story itself. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. But without a doubt, another factor that greatly influences the fanbase's adoration of the game would have to be what it gives to the audience. Not only one, but two fan-favorite characters of the entire series. First, we have Rouge the Bat, a sly jewel-loving thief who plays by our own rules, and one of our two titular characters, Shadow the Hedgehog. Who's he? He's only the second most popular character in the whole canon! Despite many people, including the Sonic team, critically watering down Shadow's character to the cool, edgy, emo one of the bunch, who has absolutely no motivation behind his character, Hey! We worked all day on that! Your shoddy craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehog kind, and for that, you shall perish. To me, he is one of the Sonic characters with the most depth. Up there with Knuckles. Despite being a fresh face to the series, Shadow was handed the entire plot of Sonic Adventure 2 to carry on his back. Almost every single event in the game spans back to the mysteries hidden within Shadow and his origin. Why he is the way he is. What is driving him? Why does Shadow hate humanity so ruthlessly and seek revenge upon it? Cue the key reason behind all of Shadow's misguided vengeance. Maria. Fifty years prior to the events of Sonic Adventure 2, there was Maria Robotnik, a young but frail girl with a kind heart who simply sought out the good in all things, big or small. She was born and raised aboard the Space Colony Ark by her grandfather, Dr. Gerald Robotnik, making her the cousin of the beloved Dr. Eggman. Egg poopy poopy butt! You may be the- Don't you ever fucking call me that ever again, I'll kill you! Maria always dreamed of visiting Earth and experiencing all the great ups and downs that it had to offer firsthand. However, despite her never-ending optimism, from birth she had been diagnosed with a terrible terminal illness, Neuroimmune Deficiency Syndrome, which unfortunately barred her from the world below. However, Gerald held out hope for the girl that he considered to be his daughter more than anything, and sought a cure. And if he couldn't find one, then he would make one. After all, he was considered to be one of, if not THE greatest scientific mind of his time. If anyone could do it, it was him. He spent his time tinkering with many different projects, but none were as complicated or controversial as his Project Shadow, the immortal ultimate life form, a being that challenges the dark harrowing face of death itself. Project Shadow was initially brought to the table when the President of the United Federations wanted to commission military weapons so great that they would be capable of mass destruction. So, he approached Gerald with the idea. However, he hid his true intentions under the veil of achieving the all-time dream for humanity. Immortality. The name Shadow was given to the project to make light of how ridiculous an idea it is to try to do the impossible. As in, it's not possible to replicate a true shadow, just like how it was always believed that mortality could never ever be achieved. 
Gerald initially was hesitant to agree to the president's plan. A part of him felt that the government was simply going to take advantage of his intelligence in order to cause mayhem and war. But he eventually agreed once he remembered Maria, and what this could possibly mean for her and her imminent demise. This could be the only way to save her after all this time. And oh man, he really should have listened to his gut. At first, outsiders of the project deemed it far too far-fetched and useless. They were astonished upon discovering that THE Gerald Robotnik was behind the stupidity. But rather than listening to the Melvins on the sidelines, Gerald began researching the Seven Chaos Emeralds in directed trials to see the effect their power has on living beings. The test proved in Gerald's favor, and so he moved forward onto the next phase of the project, seeking out Black Doom the leader of an extraterrestrial race, the Black Arms. Once introductions between him and Black Doom were finished, they discussed the beginnings of Project Shadow and what Gerald hoped he could assist him on, which was to provide any sort of genetic material of his own for the life form to grow upon. Black Doom agreed, but on one condition, that the Seven Chaos Emeralds would be brought back to him in 50 years time. Yeah, you know, a big scary alien wants the seven most powerful objects to ever exist. No big deal or anything, right? Right? Are we sure Gerald was really the most brilliant mind of his time? No, ma'am. With a generous donation of blood from Black Doom, the first prototype of Project Shadow was conceived. The Bio-Lizard. Unfortunately, though, the Bio-Lizard had gone on a bit of a rampage through the Ark and caused a lot of damage, so it was just deemed much too uncontrollable and dangerous to move forward with. However, their work wasn't all in vain, as their mistakes with the Bio-Lizard only assisted them in perfecting their next prototype. And thus, the second bearing of the project's fruit brought us Shadow the Hedgehog. I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I'm not a furry. These are gross. Shadow was genetically related to Black Doom, much like his predecessor. However, in contrast to the Bio-Lizard, Gerald had gifted Shadow with a heart, mind, and personality of his own. He did this in hopes that no one would be capable of harnessing Shadow as a weapon. Because, in all ways possible, Shadow was built to be his own being with complete autonomy over his actions, thoughts, beliefs, and absolutely everything in between. Shortly after Shadow was created, he was free to roam the Ark like anyone else. He grew comfortable with many people aboard, but none could even begin to compete with Maria. It was an instantaneous bond that only grew stronger over the years they spent confined together on the Ark. The pair spent much of their time gazing down at the world below, allowing their curiosities about the forbidden planet to turn to a longing for more. Shadow and Maria would have long discussions that revolved about everyday simple things, like taking a stroll under a bushel of branches and allowing the sun to wash away all their cares. They dreamt of feeling free, of living life the way it should be, rather than revolving around it on a never-ending loop. Maria was Shadow's other half, and Shadow was Maria's. They were each other's person, their personal confidants. Whenever Maria needed anything at all, she always went to Shadow with it because she knew she could always count on him no matter what the situation was. And in turn, Maria was the only one that Shadow allowed himself to be open and honest with, to the point where he expressed his concerns over why he had been created in the first place. Should he be more than this hedgehog trapped running on a hamster wheel? However, despite being well aware of why Shadow was made, Maria simply fought his demons by assuring him that he is exactly what the world needs, even if he can't quite see it yet. She promised to give absolutely everything she could to assist Shadow in viewing himself as the hero she always saw him as. So in turn, she knew that she had to do whatever it took to help Shadow fulfill his purpose, no matter the cost. For many years prior, a lot of doubts had been flooding in over Project Shadow. People began viewing the research in a much darker light, between uncontrollable man-made beasts and the use of extraterrestrial genetic material. Gotta say, I understand that one. People became genuinely frightened by what the final outcome of this research could be. Insiders close to the heart of the project were also growing very weary, so for help they turned to Gun, aka the Guardian Units of Nations, which is the worldwide military-driven protector against all things villainous. 
After continuous notifications of concerns all revolving around Project Shadow had been received by Gunn, they had only one option, to take control of the growing situation and terminate all facets of Project Shadow. Maria! あの星に住むすべての人たちに幸せになるチャンスを与えてあげてみんなの願いを叶えてあげてシャドウならそれができるきっとあなたはそのために生まれたのアディオスシャドウザヘッジホークマリア once Gunn had been officially brought into the loop regarding Project Shadow, the top-ranking officials of the institution devised a plan to raid the Ark and take custody of Shadow. The plan was called the Ark Seal Destruction Operation, and the idea was to take advantage of the lab's recent mishap, the aforementioned Bio-Lizard. Gunn sent an alert to the public that a very dangerous biohazard had taken place in the Ark, and that any residents would be evacuated while Gunn, quote-unquote, handled the situation. So once everything had been set into place, Gunn violently charged into the Ark, allowing their true intentions behind the operation to shine through, to put an end to Project Shadow in its current state, and absolutely anything or anyone involved in the research facility. Everyone except Gerald. Before being detained by the soldiers, Gerald was fearful that they would try to take Shadow hostage and use him as a weapon. Which... Ultimately, that was their plan, so he had fair reason for his worries. So he said his farewells to his granddaughter and sent her on her way with Shadow in hand to the escape pods. A one-way ticket down to Earth. So the two ran hand in hand, and unfortunately the gun soldiers were hot on their trail and followed right after them, determined to get a hold of their ultimate weapon, Shadow. Through shouts for them to surrender or else, Maria was terrified. But still, she didn't give in, and the two made it safely to the escape pods. However, before she was even given a chance to board one with her friend, she was shot by a gun soldier, fatally wounding the young girl who hadn't even been given the chance to start living her life yet. Watching in terror as his only companion, the person he cared for more than anything else, began to fade away in front of him. Shadow was frozen, even being the ultimate life form. There was absolutely zero he could do for her, and so Maria met her demise there, on the floor of the Ark. However, before her premature departure, she stayed true to the silent vow she made on Shadow's behalf, and did everything she could in her final moments to help him escape to Earth. With Shadow already safely locked away in an escape pod, Maria asked Shadow to grant her one wish, to keep the people of Earth safe and happy. For him to be who he was always meant to be, a protector of mankind, the shadow that is always quietly watching every step we take and keeping us from harm's way. For Shadow to realize his purpose that he had pondered on for so long. For Shadow to simply see himself in the same light she always had, as everyone's guardian. That was Maria's wish. Happiness for all. Whether a subjective point of view sees otherwise, it doesn't matter. Regardless of who you are, you are deserving of such a truly simple and yet seemingly such an impossible thing to achieve for so many. Happiness for Shadow. Hope that he'll safely make it to Earth and achieve the singular dream that together they had kept so close for so long. Hope that maybe one day, he'll be able to move forward and forge new bright dreams with all sorts of new friends. Hope for all things. Though, she knew that she never had to hope when it came to Shadow because she was nothing but sure and steady in her vision of him. She knew that no matter what, he would grant whatever wish she asked of him. So in the end, she was at peace. Like a blur, it was over. Her final words uttered were a soft farewell to Shadow as she ejected his pod, and he was sent straight to Earth, never to see Maria again. They'll pay for what they did, every one of them.
Despite not initially being successful in taking possession of Shadow during the Ark Raid, Gunn did put an end to Project Shadow itself. The Ark and everything aboard it, including the Bio-Lizard, were sealed away, while all surviving residents were returned safely to Earth. Every casualty of the takedown had been publicly announced as victims of the Ark's biohazard hoax. Despite the entire research team being slaughtered, Gunn kept Gerald as the lone survivor. Despite surviving the wrath of Gunn, Gerald was confined to Prison Island, which is exactly what it sounds like. The military kept him there to continue with his research, but with watchful eyes of the entire army on his back. Gerald complied begrudgingly, but eventually Shadow was retrieved on Earth and brought back to Prison Island as means of research for Gerald. But... That's when things started to get really messy. Soon after Shadow was returned to Gerald for research, Gerald discovered what happened to his beloved granddaughter. That Maria was one of the many that died during the Ark shutdown. And he went crazy. Bitch crazy. He completely lost himself within the grief, which I don't blame him. But it was to the point where he chose to do exactly what he feared the military would do to Shadow he decided to use him as a weapon of vengeance. While the military believed Gerald was doing as told, he really was in the midst of scheming to destroy the world and all the evil that lies within it. A child. He conducted this whole scheme that once the seven Chaos Emeralds were placed into the core of the abandoned Ark, it would crash land on Earth, destroying the planet and anything on it. The key to this plan was Shadow, though. So, he brainwashed him. Gerald convinced him that he must bring pain and suffering upon the world that so harshly wronged the two of them. That it was his duty, and his alone, to put an end to them all. Pretty hardcore. That's hardcore goth. Hardcore goth. However, the government again began to grow weary, and again suspected that Gerald was hiding his true intentions. So, you know, they shut down the entire thing, and eventually Gerald was executed. Shadow, on the other hand, was left alone on Prison Island stuck in static, as he was considered to be far too dangerous for humanity to harbor. Quickly, he became nothing more than a top-secret military weapon locked away in time. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. Flash forward five decades to the events of Sonic Adventure 2. The world is a different place. And there's a certain blue hedgehog running circles around a certain robust fellow who just happens to be Gerald's grandson. Eggman, unlike his grandfather, was considered an evil scientist all along. So when he came across Gerald's diary and learned of the abandoned Project Shadow, of course he was compelled to explore it for himself. Who do you think he is? So he made his way to Prison Island in hopes of harnessing this top secret military weapon for world domination. But when he was initially confronted with the face of a suspended shadow, he was shocked. He, like most people, mistook Shadow for Sonic and thought that someone was pulling a fast one on him. But once he reanimated Shadow, he knew for sure that the two were completely different. Literally day and night. Once awoken, Shadow thanks Eggman for freeing him and right away starts the two of them on a wild goose chase for the seven Chaos Emeralds. It was time for him to finally carry out Gerald's doomsday plans. The two split up pretty quick, and Shadow almost immediately starts to rain on Earth's parade in order to find the Emeralds. And soon enough, he attracts the attention of Sonic and his friends when Gun mistakes Shadow for Sonic. Now, don't ask me how people get these two confused. It makes no sense to me either, but whatever. It's all for the plot. After getting Sonic literally in prison, Shadow eventually meets back up with Eggman, but this time there's a third party present, Rouge the Bat, who with time becomes Shadow's right-hand man in a way. The three team up to find the remaining emeralds for differing reasons, but for Shadow and his distorted memories, it was to appease Maria to grant her wish of bringing an end to mankind. However, throughout the game, there's a voice in Shadow's head that keeps distracting him from his current path of destruction, trying to lead him in the opposite direction towards the light. That voice is, of course, Maria. Nearing the end of the game, the Doomsday Plan comes to fruition while everyone, including Shadow, is in space aboard the abandoned Ark. They're given 27 minutes to find a way to stop the Forsaken ship from falling to Earth and killing absolutely everyone. While Sonic and company scramble to come up with any sort of solution to their teensy little predicament, 
Shadow, like he used to do with Maria, peacefully stares down at the earth as nothing more than a bug that must be squashed under his thumb. Because, after all, this is what Maria wanted. Right? With only a mere 19 minutes left before the earth meets its maker, Amy confronts Shadow and begs him to help. Because despite there definitely being awful scum crawling around the world, there are also those who are pure of heart. People who deserve a second chance to prove that to him. People who deserve to be happy. Upon hearing Amy's pleas, something shifts deep within Shadow. An epiphany. A memory of Maria from long ago. And the words she said to him before she passed away. Her own hope paralleled all too closely to Amy's words. Suddenly, it all floods back to him, and there's only one thing to be done. He must do what's right and fulfill Maria's wish. All along, that's all Shadow ever cared about doing, even if he was initially misguided by his creator. In a flash, Shadow leaves Amy to meet with the others and put a stop to Gerald's plans. Deep within the Ark, the group encounters the Bio-Lizard and Shadow defeats it. But unfortunately, like Shadow, the creature had been manipulated by Gerald and reprogrammed to assist the Ark on its path to destroying Earth. With the Chaos Emeralds locked into the Ark's core, the Bio-Lizard uses Chaos Control and becomes the dreaded Final Hazard. These boss names. <laughs> oh, Sonic, I love you. So in turn, Sonic and Shadow team up and use the Emeralds to supify themselves. The Final Hazard is eventually defeated and the Ark is successfully transported back into orbit. With the crisis officially averted, the people of Earth rejoice and celebrate their spiky-headed heroes. Back in space, however, Shadow's super form begins to fade, and he begins his fateful ascend down towards Earth. In what may be his last moments, Shadow finally grants himself absolution. Peace and comfort with the thought of Maria. That maybe, just maybe, Despite his wrongdoings along the way, in the end he fulfilled his true purpose by granting her wish, and that she could be proud of him. That maybe now, her soul is at rest seeing that humankind was given a second chance at happiness, and that Shadow became the hero she always knew he was destined to become. And while Shadow falls towards Earth, that's the only thing that matters to him. Maya. Despite crash landing into Earth, Shadow managed to survive the fall. I mean, the guy was instantly one of the most popular Sonic characters. He basically got his own video game overnight. Obviously, they wouldn't actually kill him. I think DeviantArt would have died. Eggman fortunately came across a barely breathing shadow and brought him back to his lab to restore and heal him. And eventually Rouge breaks into his lab and discovers her old comrade. So she sets him free and quickly realizes something. Shadow has zero clue who he is or why he exists in the first place. When Shadow had fallen to Earth at the end of Sonic Adventure 2, the trauma of the crash gave Shadow severe amnesia to the point where the only memories he did have consisted solely of Maria, and they only confused him more. He had no clue who this girl was, but for some reason her existence and her sadly disturbing departure were the only things that remained in his mind. In his own game, Shadow the Hedgehog, his memory loss only put him in various vulnerable positions which allowed many different people to try taking advantage of him and the power he was innately created with. People such as... His father, for example? If we want to call him that. Fifty years from when Gerald promised him the Chaos Emeralds, Black Doom returns like a bad smell and convinces Shadow to gather the Emeralds for very shady reasons. Then you have Gun trying to capture and destroy Shadow once and for all, and Shadow has zero clue why, but he is completely unfazed. Then there's Eggman, who's basically just being his typical annoying self. And then there's Sonic, who is apparently a racist. It's the black creatures! Run down those black creatures! That cage looks like it's meant to hold the black creatures. There are still some black creatures left to take out! Just what are these black creatures? Let's hunt down the black creatures! Let's show the black creatures that we mean business! Don't let the black creatures get away! 
<laughs> Throughout the game, Shadow regains himself in his memories. But most importantly, he remembers Maria and the promise he made to her half a century ago. So despite being torn in so many different directions, Shadow decides that it's better if he tries to leave most of his past behind him and start anew. That it's time to blaze his own trail and play by his own rules. He takes it upon himself to continue protecting mankind for the sake of Maria. The continuous impact of Maria's wish and her friendship with Shadow on the franchise as a whole was massive. Sonic Adventure 2 completely changed the trajectory of the franchise's life, allowing the stories to become more than simply good versus evil. Because in real life, it's never that simple. People are more than their one screw up or their 10 good intentions. There's good and bad in everyone, regardless of who you are. It explored the idea of grief and how it can affect people in such varying ways. For example, when Gerald discovered that Maria was murdered, he lost his mind in the agony and tried to put an end to the world entirely as revenge. Whereas Shadow all along only wanted to do what Maria wished for, he sought to live life the way Maria would have if she was still here. With an entire decade passing from the series' original release on the Genesis, every kid of that time had grown up. They were ready for something new and more, quote-unquote, mature, like other games of the early 2000s. So the franchise decided to grow with their fanbase and release something absolutely perfect. Is the game mechanically a masterpiece? Well, let's be honest. No Sonic game is a control-based masterpiece. But they always have heart. And this game is the perfect reflection of that. So emotionally, it is an absolute masterpiece. And even though the quality of Sonic games have faltered as the years have passed, at his core, Shadow stays unwaveringly strong in who he always has been. Which is kind of ironic considering everything, but it's all because of Maria. Everything he does stems back to her in the days spent together aboard the Ark. A time that no matter how many years go by, will ever be forgotten. By Shadow, the franchise, or the fan base. Because even now, more than 20 years onwards from the game's release, Maria's wish is still being fulfilled. Happiness and hope for all. Always and forever. <laughs>